Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here, and today I am wearing a Playboy Bunny schmog. You see it? It's there. In fine print. Yes, it's upside down. I've actually had this for a few years, and it's completely irrelevant to the story. So, what I wanted to talk about today is basically a kind of a breakdown of airsoft as a sport, particularly more so in Japan, where I have more experience in stateside. However, as you will see, it comes down to three main pillars. We're going to make a little triangle triangle shape here, you see? And what we have is we have Milsim up here, Speedsoft, and then Cosplay. And it's going to tie in a lot to why I love the sport, personally, but it's also, I'm going to cover the extreme factor as to why some people do not enjoy airsoft. In fact, quite the opposite, tend to despise it. So, first off, uh, let's start with Speedsoft, because it's going to be one of the easier ones. So Speedsoft, it is basically, we'll call it poor man's paintball. It's, it's poor man's paintball. But whenever you have an airsoft game and you're unable to think of a really clever set of rules or anything in particular, it generally comes down to, hey, shoot all the other guys whilst getting shot a minimal amount yourself and we'll either do a death match, the last, man, the last team that has people standing, or we're going to do... A respawn game where whoever has the fewest amount of uh, respawns used is going to be the winner. And that's what it tends to come down to a lot. There have been, I haven't seen things getting any better. There's been uh, a lot of people going into the Battle Royale thing as if every video game doing it wasn't enough. But apparently some people said it's actually fun, probably worth trying. But yeah, with former service Marine Corps and lots of Marines being on the island, it's probably going to result in a lot of broken gear and guns. Who knows how expensive it will be for the field. But yeah, so... Speedsoft is generally what people devolve into. Ultimately, it is the goal of most games to shoot the other guys without getting shot. And that's kind of cool. I mean, you're going to have things with dump pouch hits and everything like that. You're going to have difficulty calling, kind of gauging whether or not it's an honest, hey, he probably didn't feel the shot, or hey, he definitely felt the shot. Yeah, sort of thing going on there. And yeah, basically, where that gets all of its hate comes from, again, discount, or poor man's paintball. Can't break the terminology, P and P, alliterative. It works. The poor man's paintball is the one aspect down there in Speedsoft. And you're gonna get that a lot when people aren't coming up with crazy objectives, bomb defusal, defend an area, so on and so forth. A lot of people are gonna be like, well, hey, we'll get the gun, we'll get a 5,000 round box or er, battery, what was it? It was the battery self loading drum mag, and basically just go out there and spray consistently nonstop. With everyone, the more, whoever has more money to invest in the more expensive, high, po high power shooting, accurate guns is generally going to win just through firepower alone. Very, well, I guess that's where you start going from poor man to expensive, but same concept. You could be running around wearing nothing to paintball. So that's an option. Then you got the Milsim aspect, which my first team that I was on was all about Milsim. And it kind of works out. I kind of like balancing the three where we get to, but Milsim is where I get to be obnoxious and wear weighted plates and armor, get actual helmets and have weight to them. And yeah, basically wear stuff that forces me to be in better shape than I am constantly. It's getting a little pudgy on the sides here. But yeah, forces me to exercise, forces me to train so that when I'm out on the field, although it's ungodly hot and heat exhaustion is a danger, I'm still out there, I'm able to run and I've had times where I'll be playing with people and like, wow, that was a really great game. I was surprised. Well, yeah, yeah. And they're like, hey, can I see your play here? It's like, oh, yeah, I'll just set it down here. And they're like, what is this? It's, a, it's, it's almost entirely pride. We'll be straight up. I do like being able to run around with that and then have other people be like, this is impossible. No one can do this. So, yeah, the Milsim aspect is fun because then you actually do get into your more objective based things that you're going to be less capable of doing with paintball. And it's going to have a more realistic, Gucci, expensive gear factor, plus all that other fun stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, you have everyone. If you start having everyone wearing training plates, I would love to, honestly. One of these days, even, if I can get the funds together, I'd love to do a game out in Okinawa where just a bunch of Warrior Trail training plates, the weighted actual heavy plates, and a few, um, even if it's just the old Pasket helmets or bring your own actual weighted helmet. You just have a whole game where everyone wears a realistic setup, 30 round magazines. So you've got ammo count to consider, you've got how much impact the extra weights to consider. And do a game like that where everything is 
obnoxiously heavy and painful because I'm already doing it and it's basically hamstringing myself against the rest of the field as most people who use gas blowbacks can tell you. When everyone else is running like high cap 500 round magazines and you've got like three heavy mags each holding 30 each, you still don't have as much ammo as that one guy has as a single mag but without the rattle. But wait and then valve always breaks. But you get the idea. So I do like the Nelson aspect. You start doing all sorts of fun, crazy things there, and it's a good time. Now, where this gets taken way too far is when people are basically, I don't want to say stolen valor per se, but you got people wearing military ranks and badges and stuff that they, well, from the military perspective, they didn't earn. Things that people are, you know, fighting and dying for, and there's a whole degree of pride, and uh, hey, this is our thing. You can't just pretend you have it. Sort of a deal, and that's where people are going to really hate on the Milsom aspect. People get way too into the mentality of a fire team, what they should be able to do. And again, you're not shooting 800 meters with a DMR, or 500 meters with an M4, M16 platform, or even the 300 meters with an AK. Everything's going to be closer to, particularly under the Jewel Law, 50 meters if you've got a really, really good Type 4 barrel, hop up and unit, all that good stuff. So, yeah, Milsom. Milsom's pretty cool. I do enjoy the Milsom aspect. But again, everything in moderation. So kind of balancing the... Well, I'm basically... I'll actually, let me finish up the last one. I'll tell you how all this plays into how, why I like Airsaw. So then, last one. Was it over here? No, it was over here, wasn't it? Yeah. Come back to you. The cosplay aspect. Where you're not just Gucci, but now you're Stormtrooper for the Emperor Gucci. And there is, there's a few guys who go out and they'll jump as the Stormtroopers. A bunch of other dudes like to cross-dress as cat maids. It's an interesting time. You could probably get a Nerf gun, drop some acid, and run around in the right parts of America and have a very similar experience to what you'll get playing Airsoft in Japan. Although I would say Solid Snake is probably the number one most cosplayed guy. Then Resident Evil, Biohazard as they have it with all the umbrella forces. Umbrella patches are pretty popular. But you've got people doing all sorts of crazy stuff, particularly, oh, World War II cosplays. That's a really big one. A little less so into the Stormtrooper fantasy, more into the IRL. And there is a store, <laughs> fun story, my buddy actually took me to when we were up in Tokyo. And it's just straight Nazi <laughs> everything. Old officer caps and everything is like, mm, I don't, I don't think this would go over as well in America. And then everyone was just like, Actually, you know what? <laughs> Story ends there. <laughs> no, I'm not going to talk about what some of the uh, customers in the store are up to. <laughs> I, to me, it's funny, but I know other people. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, you know, that, the story ends there. We're going to end that tangent. But yeah, cosplay. You got people doing a lot of things. And it doesn't really tie into Milsim, except for a bit of the earlier story, or the actual Speedsoft at all. It's people... And what I do love about this part, though, this part, I don't remember what side it was on, what I do love about it, though, is that people out there, they're not trying to win, per se. They generally put a good deal of effort into their costumes and stuff, but they're having fun, which ultimately is the big thing I would say is the most important, is if you're not having fun, then why are you playing? It's a good chance to work out. You're outside. You're doing things. A lot of people are running around, sometimes a bit more than others, with less weight. But you're having fun and, you know, making friends along the way, taking some fun photos and uploading those and having a good time. That's what I do love about it. What people don't love about it is, again, you're not pulling enough from the other two. You're just out there having fun, which means you're a gun that's not particularly contributing to the fight. You're not shooting enough people and you're probably not carrying anything particularly heavy to an objective or from an objective, etc., etc. So yeah, you kind of take those three aspects, and a lot of people are like, eh, go join a real military branch. But no, it's, it does have value. Like, we, when I was enlisted early on, in a very false glimmer of hope that I received before everything morale-wise went crashing, was we went out to go play with speed sim, or, uh, sim rounds. Sim rounds at Camp Schwab. And we went up there, we did a day of just training, magazine things, room clearing, all sorts of good stuff like that. And it was a great time, it really gave me a few good ideas. But again, constantly building on top of the knowledge. Something I may like today, I might find out is terrible later, or find something exponentially better. No one told me about Elkans. 
I've seen them before, never really knew what they were, but no one actually told me about Elkans until like three days ago. I'm like, oh, Trigicon ACOGs are fun, but 4X for Airsoft? Pfft, it'll never work. It's like, well, I like my little red dot, it's great for a lot of the close quarters shoot, but occasionally when it's taking all those longer shots, it'd be nice. Elkans. Elkans Spectre DR. No one ever told me about it. So, one of the main things I'm learning from Airsoft, things that I've, I've never even learned military-wise, because again, everyone knows what an ACOG is, ACOG RCO, but Elkans, you don't see a whole lot of Elkans without going like insane special forces area, so. Yeah, so. And it's from Airsoft that I learned about this, because Patches, Patch Company, I follow a bunch of things, I'm like, oh, what's this? And someone's like, hey, that's a really cool Elkan on that rifle. I was like, what? So. There is a benefit, so sim rounds. We did sim rounds up in Schwab. We were met by a good buddy. We'll call him Kitsune Kun, Mr. Fox. And we went pop, 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 pop. We had a bunch of like five round magazines of nine millimeter sim rounds. We had to wear a paintball mask and our flak jackets and everything, helmets and whatnot. And it was a great time. We ran around, shot people, we had fun. We learned a bunch of cool stuff. Now, that was good and all, but you don't get to do that stuff particularly. You're not going to have the same level of military gear aspects and movement and everything like we did military-wise with sim rounds. You're not getting the same distance and accuracy with airsoft. Airsoft makes a fantastic thing. And to tie airsoft into martial arts, yeah, this is going to be a fun bit of a stretch because generally martial arts is, hey, you need to basically murder late the other guy before he can murder late you. And the more violence you use, the faster you'll accomplish the goal, increase your chances of survival. Fun! But we're not getting to that. We're getting to the martial arts portion, less so in the lethality but into the sparring aspect. Now sparring, the ultimate goal is not to hurt each other. I know, crazy idea, but even some of the boxing sparring I got to do, you were pulling a lot of punches. If you can hit the guy on the jaw, it was like, generally you know, like, like tap or something. Martial arts sparring, you're not throwing a lot of elbows or knees. You could do like a faint little thing, but you're not really gonna injure the other guy. But your goal is basically to even pull the punch, like a quarter of an inch from the dude, just enough for like the uh, covering, cloth, foam covering of your glove. Give them a little tap and let them know they've been hit. And although that doesn't seem like it'd be terribly useful, you're playing your mind against the mind of someone else. You're learning how other people tend to think, a few of the things they fall into, how you can exploit weaknesses in the OODA loop, intelligence gap of how they're thinking and processing the world around them. And ultimately, even the lower level kind of martial arts things. You're learning about how you can be blocked, how the other person's gonna move, how you can move, and it's really good in case you do get into an actual fight where you might not feel as prepared as you should be, but you have a concept of sort of how everything that works and that gives you a huge boost as to someone who's just flailing around aimlessly. Which is good. Airsoft wise, although it seemed like it'd be CQB based with everything being within 50 meters, I know I'm talking pretty fast right now. It is, you see, things appear as a nightmare. It is basically giving you good training of how things are going to work in a CQB environment. Having actual military gear for the more milsim things gives you a good idea of what loadouts work, what loadouts don't work, and that you shouldn't cover all of your molly in patches because it exists. And the more you learn these things, the more you can process it when you do go. If you do go out to an actual shooting range to do real shooting, or if Japan suddenly gets a uh, speed shooting course, which it desperately needs, the whole firearm ban thing. It's not officially banned. People sell like shotguns and stuff, but it is really, really a massive hindrance. A lot of the Japanese kids, I would say, would actually do pretty well in speed shooting tournaments and stuff, but they don't get in the practice or the time they need because lack of access to firearms. But it would be great. I'm just throwing it out there, but I was going somewhere with this. Yeah, so you figure out what loads, loadouts and stuff work. So whether you're either doing a tactical training course stateside or if you're ever just taking your gear and doing a speed shooting course with BBs, airsoft-wise, because we have nothing else, it's kind of sad. I cry at night, every, every night, thinking about it. But you get the idea of what gear work loadout works, where you should keep your stuff, how other people are going to maneuver. And in some weird, crazy way, if you do end up in a situation where you happen to have a firearm, and there's a bunch of people running around in close quarters, at least within a sort of 50 meter mentality, you're going to have an idea how much to expose your body, how to maneuver the gun, how to keep yourself safe from being exposed while able to get rounds on target, and basically how the other guys might be moving, 
And the more you experience this, the more you're moving about about it, the more confident you feel, the less that fear is going to grip you and give you the risk of just locking up entirely. So it does have a benefit. You can use Airsoft to supplement military training to an extent. But again, like I said, there's not that lethality of getting elbowed in the jaw frequently or in the ribs or broken bones or anything crazy like that. So you're going to have a, a degree of confidence and knowledge, but you may not be at that level of training you want to be or really should be. So it, it does have benefits. And if you are at that level, then you're probably doing a lot of 500 meters precision shooting or moving targets and all that other good stuff. Moving to fire. No, my good buddy, uh, buddy Opie actually had some really good videos of him running around and shooting stuff up on base. So yeah, so cool stuff, fun things to do. And um, yeah, so ultimately the moral of the video is you guys should totally give me money so I can uh, buy more stuff for reviews and go stateside to go play pew pew with all the cool kids like my good buddy Redbeard or to meet Thumpy. Thumpy's a cool guy, need to meet him. Or my buddy Mythic in, actually I'm not gonna say where he lives, but he lives out there in the States somewhere. And yeah, go hang out with him. He actually lives too, pretty close to one of my other buddies and hanging out with all of them and go pew 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 pew. Or even do the real pew 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 because I have friends stateside. Actually, all my former enlisted, you know, all my former service buddies all have firearms. I mean, if I paid for ammo, I don't think they'd be opposed to me getting pew pew and helmet, camera, pew pew. Ah, so you don't have to give me money. Don't worry about that. I'll work that out on my own, unless you really wanted to. But, <laughs> but yeah, so airsoft, milsom, all that fun stuff comes together, and everyone has a great time. How much time? Sixty minutes. Yeah, it's not bad. But yeah, so just some things that I usually think about and have ideas about and like talking about, because basically, CQB sparring is useful. And it's not perfect, but it's a lot of fun. You have great times. And most importantly, yeah, most importantly, have fun. If you can, exercise, because one of the big things that people do is too many people get into the whole camera, oh, look how Gucci I am, and not enough of the... How do, how do they put it? There's a good one. It's like um, a $995 gun and gear and a $5 fitness plan. There you go. So yeah, exercise, 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 stay hydrated, exercise some more, get swole, no, not necessarily, your goal is to run more, but if you do end up firemen carrying people, then you should be able to do that in full gear, if you can. It's fun. I have a pull-up bar, if that tells you anything. And America. But yeah, so, tangent's gone on for quite a while. Those are just my thoughts on how airsoft generally tends to work out. There's a lot of cool innovation stuff. And it gives you fun things to play around with and have fun. You get to do all the fun, cool, tactical operator things that you generally wouldn't get to do otherwise. Outside of a shooting range. You're shooting at paper targets that don't shoot back. And although you're going to learn stuff shooting paper targets, you're going to learn more stuff with BBs shooting people. Let me throw that part in there before I just say shooting people because someone's going to take it out of context and it's going to be a bad time. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. It gives you some thoughts. You get some juices flowing around, maybe something percolates or another, but yeah. Good stuff. Stay training, stay chivalrous, and I'll see you in the next video, if not at the field first, because I need to go play. So yeah, cheers, take care, and uh, Playboy schmogs are super comfy. The end.